Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to try out a recent addition to the Ravensburger Crypt series of puzzles, the Crypt Gradient. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Crypt series before, they're basically a range of very challenging puzzles that are all under the 1000 piece count. So for example, this one is 631 pieces. However, the catch is, is that they're, well, up until now, usually all a solid color. So we have, there's a black one, a gold, a silver, and a hot pink, as far as I know. Um, and the other catch is, is that all the pieces in the puzzle are strange and irregular shapes. I think they're all uh, within a single puzzle, the pieces are all unique as far as I know. Um, so basically, unlike a normal puzzle where you have a reference picture or the picture on the box, um, in this case, you're basically just putting together a solid color just purely based on the piece shapes. Um, however, in that range that's available, uh, the black, I believe, is the hardest. So it will have some very, very like irregular shapes and things won't go exactly where you think they're going to go so it does sort of usually entail thinking outside the box a little bit to get to the final rectangle shape um, anyway when i saw this one it really caught my eye mainly because it's a rainbow gradient and that's something i really love in puzzles um, and i just thought well that's a bit different than these sort of solid colored ones and i normally actually find um, regular puzzle rainbow gradients fairly easy to do usually um, so I thought well I want to really give this one a go and sort of see is this going to be easy as well even though it has the strange shaped pieces so I don't know it's going to be a bit of an experiment and it's going to be interesting to see what it's what my experience is like doing this puzzle so uh, let's unbox it and see what we're dealing with so before we open it up um, the front doesn't show you the whole image um, but actually on the back it does it I, well I believe this is the whole image here but it's very tiny so it's not so great as a reference image um, it also has a bit of just information like in different languages about what the crypt experience is like um, so let's open it up and have a look all right um, so we have our bag of puzzle pieces and the other thing which I was expecting to be in here is there's a sealed envelope which apparent I've never actually opened one of these in the other crypt puzzles that I've done but it's a sealed envelope that has essentially the solution in it so um, I think from what it from what I understand it's a larger image of outlines showing you where like the pieces go um, so it's not there's no color it's just black and white I believe um, and, and it comes in multiple languages. So my plan is to not have to open this for this puzzle and I haven't had to open it for the other puzzles. Um, so we'll sort of see how that works out. Um, so let's open up these pieces and have a closer look. We'll get there eventually. All right. Okay, so these are super, really pretty colors, um, as expected, since the box is sort of a pastel -y rainbow. Oh, not all of them pastel, I guess some are brighter than others. But anyway, um, that's definitely a very interesting mix of piece shapes in here. So we have some that are like very triangle, sort of slither like. Um, we have some that are kind of rect oops, kind of rectangular, but still not your sort of standard puzzle piece shape. What else do we have? We have, I don't know what you call this, curved and rectangular, but not really. Um, what else? Oh, other very like narrow kind of pieces. Um, yeah, so basically, oh, well, even this one is very strange, long and kind of curved. So as you can see, they're definitely not your standard piece shape and, um, oh, check this one out, <laughs> curved. Um, yeah, so it's definitely gonna be interesting putting this together. Um, yeah, um, 
Oh, and I believe this is the centerpiece, the nice, like, this one's pretty easy to, to identify. Um, round with little bits, kind of looks like a weird microbe or something. Yeah, so I'm going to be interested to see how much of an influence these shapes are going to be in putting this together. Um, I don't know, like, I think I'm going to approach it with colors first, and then if I get stuck, maybe use the piece shapes. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out. So why don't we get into puzzling or sorting and puzzling and see how we go. So I've got my puzzle board out and I'm ready to start sorting and puzzling. Um, I've had a bit of a think about how I want to approach this and I sort of thought it's probably not really a good idea to try and do a border first, mainly because the pieces just aren't regular shapes. So it's going to be, I think, a bit too hard to do it that way. Um, and instead, I'm just going to treat it like a rainbow gradient and for now, maybe ignore the piece shapes unless I get sort of stuck. Like if I find an area of color that's really hard to sort of differentiate, like not enough contrast, then maybe I'll try and start um, focusing more on the piece shapes instead, since they're all supposed to be unique in this puzzle. Um, so we'll sort of see how that approach goes. So the section I've decided I'm gonna start with is basically the bottom section, which is like purple in one corner and pink in the other. So a purple to pink gradient. Um, I didn't really pick this for any particular reason, except that I, like those colors the best, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start pulling out, I guess, pull out all the purples and sort of pinks and maybe put them in a couple of piles. Um, this is usually how I approach gradients. I just like go through the whole box and try and like, you know, pull out the different colors. I mean, I might, if I feel like it, I might even start um, pulling out other colors too, but I think I'll just try and pull out sort of more the purples and pinks for now. I mean, it gets a little tricky because I am planning to do a pink pile as well, but I guess it gets complicated because you're like, at what point does a pink become a purple and a purple become a pink? So I guess, I don't know, I guess there's no point worrying too much about that. Um, although there are some pinks that are kind of bordering more on like this sort of peachy orange. So I will sort of have to, draw the line at like figure out when the pinks become too orange um, yeah but that's pretty much my tactic for now um, I don't know how well this approach is going to work um, I might have to sort of change things up if this this doesn't go to plan I guess um, but yeah so I guess I'm going to keep sorting and then you'll see me start puzzling So I've pretty much managed to place all the pinks and purples. Um, it's taken me just under an hour or so. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty good going. I actually found this easier than I thought. Um, it was a little bit um, tricky at the beginning, just trying to wrap my head around like the unusual piece shapes is a bit like, it kind of tricks your brain a little bit, um, but you know, uh, after a little while you sort of get into the swing of things and it just sort of you don't even think about it anymore you just it actually works to your advantage so yeah my my plan so far of like concentrating on colors and then um, sort of piece shape secondary is sort of really uh, been working I think and I've actually found the piece shapes really like helpful because um, yeah it just makes it a lot easier to know 
what I'm looking for. I don't have to completely rely on like the, the tone or the shade of the piece. Um, so less sort of having to focus on like telling the pieces apart in color and just going like, okay, it's roughly that color, but it's this shape. So yeah, it really eliminates a lot of pieces. So that's actually, I think, made this process a lot quicker so far. Um, you might have noticed as well that I ended up not starting with the purple, but starting with the pink. And that was just purely because there ended up being a lot less pink pieces and it just looked a lot less intimidating to start with. So um, I think that worked out fine. And yeah, so I've just got a couple of little leftover pieces here, but that's more because they're sort of uh, purpley, bluey green rather than, so they don't really fit here, I don't think. So I figured the next things I'm gonna start sorting are, um, I think I'm kind of going to do the sides, maybe the yellow and oranges next. So I'm going to start pulling out some of these sort of like peachy, yellowy colored ones. Um, yeah, like sort of peachy orangey ones, because I don't think there's too many of those. Um, and then, so I'll, I'll do that, but I'm also going to pull out some of these sort of more bluey, greeny, gray ones, because I think like that might be like those sort of side parts will be next. Um, I feel like the orangey ones in that section would, should be relatively easy to place, but we'll see how we go. I'm sort of, the bit that I'm leaving to last, which is going to be more the yellowy greens, I'm anticipating that to be the hardest because that's usually like what I tend to struggle with when doing gradients. So yeah, that's my theory. We'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, I'm also just like doing these because they're the easiest part to reach. I may end up um, turning the board around later on when I want to work on like the greens and yellows just because I have short arms and it's hard for me to reach. Um, yeah, so I'm going to continue sorting these and start putting them, finding out where they go and putting them in place. Okay, so that last bit only took about 40 minutes. Um, I did go a bit further into the yellow than I was planning, but it was kind of addictive and I don't know, I just kept finding it harder to stop. Um, but I did start actually having a bit of trouble in that yellow, um, figuring out where pieces went, like and being able to sort of differentiate between the different shades of yellow. Um, so yeah, so now, and even on this side, these greens were starting to get a bit more difficult. Um, so I've sort of pulled out a lot of these like greeny yellows and these sort of, I guess, kind of verging into aqua kind of pieces. Um, but you might have noticed I was really stretching to try and like reach this section. So I'm actually going to turn this board around now just to make things a bit easier. So I actually do this with quite a few puzzles, thousand piece puzzles, um, just because, I, well, I don't mind working on puzzles upside down and it just makes things so much easier. So yeah, if you're short like me, I highly suggest to not be afraid of turning your puzzle board around or even moving around the different side of the table. So when I do 2000 pieces, the board's usually a bit big to spin around. So I sometimes will just get up and either sit or stand on the other side and put in pieces that way. I take a whole bunch of pieces with me for like a section on the other side. Um, yeah, so there's still quite a few, we've pretty much got just greeny, limey aqua left. So there's a lot of green still left in the box. And I think this section is going to probably take me the longest. That's my guess, just because I'm finding it harder to tell the, the colors apart. Uh, but I'm going to just start like trying to maybe find some of these like lighter greeny yellow pieces. Oh, there we go. At least having them like laid out flat like this 
you can now like really tell the difference between the sort of aqua ones and these more um, lime kind of ones. And also the shape really actually is kind of assisting me in like figuring out what goes where. So that's actually been quite helpful. I've been finding this to be like one of the easiest crypt puzzles I've done, definitely, like by far, um, because you're basically, well at the moment it basically feels like I'm just doing a gradient, but then I've got these sort of more defined shaped pieces to sort of help me figure out what goes where. Um, whereas like a normal gradient, you'd be doing, when it gets to these parts that are low contrast, you'd be just be doing like a lot of trial and error with trying, you know, trying lots of, uh, I guess pieces in the same spot until you found what you're looking for. So yeah, it's definitely, I don't know, definitely easy so far. Like surprisingly easy. I didn't, I thought it would be easier, but not this easy. So, you know, I should probably, I don't want to bite my tongue because who knows this part might take me ages. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to continue on with this and I think I will get back to you when like I'm done. So. See you in a bit. So I finished the puzzle and that last section was really quick. It was a lot faster than I expected and I think it was actually the quickest section. It only took around 30-ish minutes. Um, and I think all up the whole thing was less than two and a half hours, definitely less than three hours. So way, way quicker than I expected. Um, I think like normally when I do uh, gradient puzzles, they do tend to be quicker than a sort of normal picture puzzle. Um, I mean, of course, this is also less than a thousand pieces as well. Um, but I think the thing that really aided me in making this quicker was the fact that we do have these like unusual shapes. So anytime like around these greens or yellows that I came across a section that I was finding it hard to differentiate between the different colors, um, I could then sort of fall back like as a safety measure onto the piece shapes. So whereas a normal regular shaped um, gradient puzzle just wouldn't have that you know it'd be a lot more trial and error um, yeah so I think that just really made it so much quicker so yeah definitely definitely surprised um, but that being said I still even though it was fast I still found it an interesting challenge like I've done a lot of gradient puzzles so I think they can get a little samey and sometimes a bit boring or too easy and predictable after a while so just having these extra sort of different shapes to work with just gave it a different challenge, a different level of like interest and challenge. So I kind of appreciated that. Like it was, yeah, nice to do something different. Um, yeah. But that being said, like because it was so easy and it was a gradient, it makes me sort of think about is it really a crypt puzzle then? Because all the other crypts are black, gold, silver, and hot pink. So they're all a solid color. And that just makes it a lot more difficult. You're only relying on P shape essentially. So it sort of, yeah, makes me think like, does this really count as a crypt? I don't know. I mean, I guess it does in terms of the types of pieces, but like, is it a, yeah, I don't know, is it too easy to be a crypt? I'm not really sure. Um, but, you know, that being said as well, I think if you were interested in getting into crypt puzzles, but you were a bit hesitant, because they definitely are overwhelming, I, I think, and they can be a bit off-putting, they look a bit scary, I think this could be the perfect place to start, like, as an introduction to crypts, because it is pretty easy. It's very pretty to look at, so you don't get too bored staring at the same color. Um, so I think it could be, yeah, a really good introduction 
and you know and then after that you could ease your way into some of the easier ones which I believe are like the silver and the hot pink I believe they're the next in terms of like being easier so you know yeah it could be good to do this and um, sort of get used to like the way the shapes kind of fit together and the, the sort of how the border works and all that um, but yeah so yeah I can definitely see myself doing this again and I can definitely see it staying in my collection for a long time definitely going to be one of my favorites and I can yeah I've just really enjoyed the overall experience um, so I guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of this puzzle and is it something that you'd be interested in doing could you see yourself maybe doing this and getting into crit puzzles um, or you know have you done this and how was your experience and yeah and do you think this counts as a crit puzzle so yeah thanks so much for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles and for even more uh, puzzle content you can check me out over on instagram at jigsaw underscore thanks so much and see you next time bye